Hello everybody to a cool scratch tutorials video. Today we're going to be going over a classic Pong game. I'm sure you've all seen Pong before, but if you haven't, there is an example on screen right now. But before we jump into the video, it'd really mean a lot if you'd like this video and subscribe, as it only takes one second of your time, and it really does help me out. But now let's just get into the video. Right now I've pulled up a very new project. We can see we have Scratch Cat here, and I say we just get our backdrop done first for our game. So let's go to our backdrop section. And I think I'm going to make the backdrop maybe a blue. So I kind of like this color right here. There you go. And let's go to the rectangle area. And let's deselect the outline by just clicking this red line down here. And let's just draw a rectangle. And you can see it's just the blue background. Next, I want to have a line splitting down the side so our two players can tell um, whether the ball is on their side or their opponent's side. So I'm just going to go to the line section here, and maybe I'll make it like a dark blue of some sort. There we go. That line's a little thin, so maybe I'll make it size 2. Oh no, I lost my color. Let's just select it one more time. Why is there a rectangle down there? Okay, there we go. Let's finally draw our line once more. There we go. Now we have an evenly split middle. And then maybe I'll just want something at the top that will hold our score for both our players, like so. So we just have a T right there and our variables, which is the score, will go up there later. Now what we want to do is make two different colored rectangles on the very edges of our backdrop. This will make a little more sense later into the video, but let's just do it right now. So let's go to our fill area here, deselect the outline, the red line down here, and I'm just going to make it maybe a green. There you go, I like that green right there. Just going to make a very a uh, small rectangle, very thin rectangle, and we want it to be barely over this white line, so so it barely appears up on the screen. Now that we have it on one of these sides, we want to do it on the other side, and it's important that you make it a different color. So maybe I'll make this one a yellow-orange color. Oh no, it, it changed that rectangle. That's fine. We'll just make that yellow, and then we'll go over here and do the same thing. Make a very uh, small sliver at the very edge of the white line so it barely appears. And I'm going to make this one green. There you go. So we have a green and a yellow line on each side of our platform. Once again, this will make more sense later. So we basically got our backdrops down. And what we want to do is delete Scratch Cat here because we're not going to be using him. The only sprites or characters we're going to need for this project are two paddles and a ball. So let's go down to choose a sprite, and let's scroll down until we see the paddle sprite. Just going down, oh, there's the paddle right here. And since we're going to want two of them, I'm going to press duplicate and we're going to have two different paddles. I'm going to go up to the costumes for our first paddle, and I want to color code this. So I'm going to maybe make the middle of this one black, and then the second one I'm going to make red. I'm just going to go to red here. There we go. And now to make it a little easier to see, I'm going to make it so it is an outline. So I selected the black paddle, and we just want it to be an outline this time. So I'm going to make the color black and then get rid of the fill. I think one as the size for a line rectangle. It's a little thin, so I'm going to bring the size up to 3. And I'm just going to drag over our paddle here and make it so the outline is black too. I'm going to go to the same second paddle here, and I'm going to make it red once again. So now we have a red paddle and a black paddle. I'm going to just drag the red paddle to the right side and the black paddle to the left side. And now let's make the codes for these paddles. Let's go into our very first paddle here, and let's drag in a when green flag clicked. Let me just bring the size up here so you can guys can see it better. When green flag clicked, we want it to point in, we want to point vertically instead of horizontally like it is now. 
we can see that it's pointing in direction 90, but to change that we go to motion and we want to drag in point in direction, click on it and drag the arrow all the way up till it says zero. So when we press the green flag, it, he will actually be looking upwards now. So once he's looking upwards, we want to drag him to a position that seems really good. I like this position here. And we can see that our X and Y position change, but it also updated in our code over here. We just want to drag this in. So it will always go to this position when we start the game. And then we want to make a code. So when I press a certain key, it will go up. When I press another key, it will go down. To do this, let's go into control and drag in a forever loop. Let's drag in two if then statements and then go to sensing and go to key blank pressed. Drag one in for each if then statement. Make one W. So since it's two playered, we can't have everything up arrow and down arrow. We want one to be W A S D. So up would be W and S would be uh, downwards because that's how WASD works. So W and S, and I'm just doing W and S because it's the left side and I would think the left player would want the left side of the keyboard. And so when W, we want it, when W key press, we want it to go up, but when the S key press, we want it to go down. To do this, let's go to our motion area and let's drag in two change, uh, not change X, drag in two change Y by blocks. Well, when W pressed, we want to change Y by five. When S key pressed, we want to change it by negative five. So it will go up five Y units, but when you press S, it will go down five Y units. So let's, let's just test this out and click the green flag. We can see that it goes up as well as down. That is perfect. That is basically all we want for this code for one of the paddles. So we got our code down for one of these paddles, but we want to get the code down for our second paddle. To do this really easily, we want to click on our backpack down here, click open, and we just want to drag this inside of our backpack. Basically, this will copy it and it will allow us to just paste it in this paddle here. We can see that it appeared down here. Go to paddle two, drag our very latest thing in our backpack in, and we can see it appears in the code for paddle two. Just gonna zoom in quickly. So we have the same exact code for paddle one as well as paddle two, but paddle two is actually going to be using the arrow keys. So since W is up, what we wanna do is change this to up arrow, and since S is down, we wanna change this to down arrow. So, when I click the green flag, we can see that both red and black go to the same position. To change this, uh, we want to, since red is on the right side, let's just drag it to a position that I really like, like right here. And we can see its X position is 220 and Y position is three. So let's go to our go to X and Y block. Let's change this to 220 and let's change the Y to three. So when, you click, when we click the green flag, we can see that both of the paddles go to the places we assigned it to go. And I can press the up arrow and the down arrow to make the right paddle move. And I can press the W and S key to make the left paddle move. So we've gotten our very basic paddle script down. Let's just get our ball script down. To do this, let's go to choose a sprite. We are going to go until we see ball right here. We can see our ball appears when we click on it. And let's make the code for our ball now. So the code for the ball is gonna be a little more complicated than our paddles, but it's very, it's gonna be fine as I'm going to go through everything and what everything means for you guys. Just gonna zoom in one area right here. It's a little big, there we go. So when our green flag clicked, we want it to go to the very center of the screen. So let's just go to motion and drag in the go to x0 and go to y0. Click the green flag, we can see it goes to 0, 0, the very center of the screen. And we want it to point in a direction, basically. So when we press start on the game, we want it to go in a direction and bounce off the walls. So we just want it to point in direction 45, which is basically 
it'll be looking in this direction when we very when we start the game. We can see that it's just in the middle right here, the arrow. We can see that not much has changed. This is just for later in the script. And then we just want to go to Control and drag in a forever loop. We want it to keep on moving, but if it's on an edge, we want it to bounce off the edge and change the direction it's going in. So to do this, what we want to do is move 10 steps block. The 10 steps block is very helpful because it doesn't move either horizontally or vertically. It moves in any direction that our sprite, or ball in this case, is moving. So if we drag in the move 10 steps, we can see that it'll actually go in our direction that we told it to go to, 45 degrees. But we can see that it really quickly disappeared off our screen. Just to change this, we want to go to if on edge, bounce, which will make it so it'll bounce when it touches the edges. So we can see that it continuously goes around our screen. Now what we want to do is make it so it senses whether it's touching our paddles. So let's go to our control section and drag in two or just one if then statement. We want it to sense if it's touching uh, our paddle. We can just go to our sensing area and drag in a touching paddle block. If touching paddle then we want it to change the direction it goes in, also making it look like it bounced off the paddle. So this is very simple. All we got to do is go to motion, and we want to turn 15 degrees. But we want to change this to 180. So basically just go, so say it's going from this angle. We, it'll actually bounce off to turn 180 degrees, which is by reversing it, and it'll actually go this way. So we can see this is paddle one right here. So if it, we'll just wait for it to touch it. We can see that it actually just bounces off the paddle. Let's go back to our ball script. And now we want to do the same thing for touching paddle two. So we can just click on our if touching paddle statement and press duplicate. Just drag it under the if statement. And we want to just change this to paddle two. So we can see that it will bounce off both paddle two as well as paddle one. We can let me just make it so we can demonstrate that it touches paddle two and we can see it bounced off of paddle two. Now what we want to do is create a scoring system. To do this we are going to be using the variable section. We're going to go to variables and click make a variable. Let's call this player one score. Select for all sprites and click OK. Next, what we want to do is make player2 score as a variable. Again, selecting for all sprites. And then we want to just, we can see that they appear on our screen here. We want to set our variables to zero at the very beginning so they reset when we restart the game. Just select player1 score and player2 score. So set player score 1 to zero, set player2 score to zero. Now we want each player to gain a point when the paddle doesn't hit, uh, the ball does not hit the paddle and actually hits the edges. To make the script, this is what we made the two different colored rectangles for. We want to go to events, drag in a when green flag click statement, and we want to go to drag in a forever loop. We want it to forever sense if touching Let's drag in the touching color. And we can see that if it touches, we can select the color and it'll zoom in here. If it's touching this yellow color that we selected, then we want our player two score to go up because they player one made a mistake, which will make player two score go up. So we want to change player two score by one for one point. Now let's just if we do this, that means it will, once it touches yellow, here, let me just move my paddle out of the way. We can see that it went up two points, or it can go up many depending how long it touches yellow. Just to stop this, we want to go to control, drag in a wait until block, wait until an operator not, wait until not touching color yellow anymore. So once it touches it, it will change it, but then it has to wait 
until it's not touching it to change the score again. So it will only go up by increments of 1 and not depending how many times it touches yellow. Let's just duplicate this once. And we want to change the touching color. Let's drag it in to green this time. So let's do it for both of these. Oh, let's see, it didn't select there. Make sure it selects. There we go. Selected the wrong color. There we go. So if touching that color, then we want to change player one score. If we double click these variables, it'll make it so it's much cleaner looking and drag this one here, this one, and this one here. This is, we can see this is player one score. So we want on the left and player two is on the right. We can just put these in our background area. If we click the green flag, everything's set to zero. We can see if it touched the background like it did there, then player one score went up. We can see that you can play with two players. You can play with friends or family. We can see that it is a very simple but very fun Pong game. I really hope you enjoyed this Cool Scratch Tutorials video. And if you learned something new or if your game came out really good, I'd highly recommend subscribing as it notifies you whenever I post a new video and liking the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Goodbye.